Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Jenna Lee and in my channel, I help teachers build businesses and brands online so that you can live life on your own terms. And in today's video, we are going to be diving deep into the top five tools and platforms that successful online teachers utilize in their virtual classrooms to level up and create more engagement and interactivity and all the while helping their lessons to stand out as well. If you're looking to level up your online teaching game, then don't forget to click subscribe so that this will not be the last video that I will see you in. All right, we are going to get started with one of my favorite tools online because I can not only use it in the classroom, but I can also use it outside of the classroom while I'm building my presence and brand on social media. And as you probably know, this is Canva. With Canva, you can create eye-catching presentations and graphics and activities. So I'm gonna take you through some of the things you can do with Canva. If I took you through all the features, we would be here all day and probably more than a full day. But we're gonna go through some things you can use in your virtual lessons. So one thing as out school teachers, if you're on a marketplace and you are selling your classes, you can use Canva to create really eye catching class listings that stand out. So as you can see here, these are a few of my class listings that I've created for out school. And you can see that there are really interesting pictures I've added and I can even add myself onto the image. You can also create worksheets in Canva. And this was one of my holiday classes. I created a few coloring pages for my students. Along with this, you can create printable props. So if you're an ESL teacher, this could be really useful in your classrooms. Another really cool feature about Canva is you can add audio and video. And there's also an animation feature of your slides. So as you can see here, you can animate the slides in different ways. And a really cool feature that will would need an upgrade. So you would definitely need um, Canva Pro to do this is you can actually record onto Canva. So out school teachers out there, if you're creating a self recorded flex class, then this would be a great feature for you to utilize in Canva. The other really interesting thing about Canva is you can create your own branding, colors, images, all that jazz. So you can really brand yourself not only as a teacher, but also if you're trying to build your brand on social media. So getting Canva is a really good idea if you not only teach online, but you also are building your own offer and brand outside of the classroom. All right, the next thing we're going on to is Google Slides. And with Google Slides, it's really similar to Canva, um, but I would say it takes just a little bit more upfront work, but it has a lot of features and more features than Canva does. So Google Slides, you can add audio and video as well. And this is for free. You can also add where maybe on your self-paced lessons that you're giving to students to do on their own, you can add a voiceover. And maybe you use this for giving them directions or you just use this for your own notes. You can also insert links to many different things in Google Slides. For instance, if you want your students to fill out a Google form, you can link that Google Drive, you can link that to YouTube, you can link that. So you can link everything. It's really nice for flex classes if you're doing a self-paced curriculum so that the students can just click and get all of their lesson in one slide. A feature I'm going to show you here is in one of my escape rooms where you can have clickable slides. So for instance, if you hit present and click on the slide, then Santa's coming up and we click and different things are happening. So that is a really interesting feature that you can utilize in Google Slides. 
again, this is my escape room. So escape rooms are so fun to create in Google Slides. You could also do a stop motion animation. You can create presentations just like Canva. You can also have a Bitmoji classroom that you create. So if you want that fun little touch to your flex classes or at the beginning of your educational presentations, then you can do a little Bitmoji classroom here in Google Slides. You can insert charts and diagrams, and you can also import slides from your drive or you can upload PowerPoint images. And I actually utilize Canva together with Google Slides. So another game that I do with the clickable features is choose a number and it takes the students to a picture. So that's a fun game that I will do using the clicker, clickable features of Google Slides. And another game I have done is Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And this is also utilizing the clickable slides. So this is a multiple choice game. So what is the violin made of? Wood. All right. So you can do so many different games. I would just say it takes a little bit of more upfront work, but the great thing about Google Slides is all free features. So if you don't want to pay anything extra, then Google Slides is amazing for free features. The next one we're going to talk about is Kahoot. So you can go on to Kahoot um, and search for their own quizzes. And in Kahoot, there are a huge database of quizzes on so many topics you know, ranging from non-academic to academic classes. So you can search in their database or you can actually create your own quizzes for students to compete against each other with. So the way that the Kahoot game works is that the students can log into their personal devices or they can log into Kahoot on their computer and then they race and compete with each other to choose the correct answer the fastest. And you get, the mo you get more points if you choose the correct answer and also more points on top of that if you are faster. So the person who got the most correct points, the most correct answers, the fastest, ends up winning the game. So the students love it. As you can see, this is the free version where you can choose one correct answer. It's like a multiple choice. And then you can also do true or false in the free version. But if you want to upgrade, there are more features like fill in the blank. You can choose more than one correct answer, or you can have more copyright free images to choose from, polls, and even more features. My only disclaimer about Kahoot is that it is so much easier when you let students and parents know beforehand, before the class starts, how they can log in or if they have a second device to bring it or else you will be losing some valuable class time. Take it from someone with experience. All right, the next tool that online educators use in their lessons is you guessed it, Nearpod. So I have used this in my classroom. So I'm gonna take you through some of the features here. With Nearpod, there are tons of interactive activities and games, which the students will log into on their own device so they can be um, either clicking with their mouse or touching the screen to play. You can also add in your PowerPoint images from either Google Slides or Canva. So one of the features you can utilize in Nearpod is matching pairs. So this is where you have images and the students can match them together. So in this game, the students were matching words with B in front of them and they can click match them and get them correct, just like this. Another game I have used in my classroom that is really the students love is a drawing feature where they can actually draw on the slide. They can choose their color, draw on the slide. It's really fun for the students to be able to interact to that level in the classroom without having to waste paper and print something off. Another really fun feature of Nearpod is a game called Time to Climb. And I can't really play this right now, but it's basically like Kahoot. The students can choose their own character for this game. 
and they need to choose the correct answer the fastest to get up the mountain the fastest. And whoever gets up the hill the fastest wins the game. Another feature of Nearpod is their virtual field trip. So here we are underwater. I think this is on the Great Barrier Reef. And they can literally just drag their finger across whatever they're on, whether that be iPod, iPhone, anything or even with their computer and they can look around the sea. And there's another feature called three, a 3D image where you can see like maybe the moon 3D or other things, which is really interesting to add in your classes as well. There's also a new feature that I haven't added yet in my classes, but it is drag and drop. And this is a really exciting feature to use in your classroom. I'm gonna show you this on Boom Cards. So our next tool, um, is boom cards. And with boom cards, you create slides kind of like Nearpod, but they're even just a little bit more accessible for the teachers to create different things on them. For instance, on this side, you can literally add all of these things onto this slide, um, which is so easy then to create your own slides as the teacher. I haven't currently used this in my classrooms, but what I'm going to use it for is to assess my students' level of understanding. And it's a really good self-assessment for them. They get to play games and do fun activities to assess if you know they have learned what was taught in the class. So one of the features of Boom Cards is the drag and drop feature. So this is telling students to spell cat. So they spell cat and they can submit. And it will say if cat is correct or not. Um, and then this is telling the kids to click the cat. So they can also click the correct answer and it self checks their answers. Another really interesting feature of boom cards is that the students can fill in the blank. So let's say you're doing a spelling game where they need to spell all these answers correctly and then they can click submit and see if they were correct and that was correct. And then there's also the multiple choice or quiz features so this says how many balls are there and you click the correct one. So let's say if I click it incorrectly, then it says incorrect and it will give me a little red circle. But if I click, click correctly, self correcting is really, really nice in Boom Cards. Some other features that you can add to Boom Cards if you upgrade are a sound and video upgrade. Um, you can also search Boom Cards or Boom Learning's database for free Boom Cards. So I'm going to show you that here. So here is the Boom Learning Store, and you can search for your subject here, and you can actually buy other teachers' Boom Card decks. The only issue with this is you need to ask or make sure that they are okay with you using these in your own online classroom, um, or else there's going to be a copyright issue. So make sure you're getting permission or double checking on the Boom Card deck if it says you can use these in your online classrooms. But you can also get ideas from these as well if you are creating your own decks. There are so many more features that you can utilize in the online classroom, but I have seen so many successful online teachers use these top five in their classrooms. And these top five tools can go a really long way in leveling up your online lessons. So if you found this helpful, then Go ahead and smash that like button and I hope to see you in the next one.